When the church representatives insist that these cases of pedophilia, deplorable as they are, are church's internal problem, when they display great reluctance to collaborate with police in their investigation, they are, I think, in a way right. The pedophilia of Catholic priests is not something that concerns simply the persons who, because of accidental reasons of private history, with no relation whatsoever to the church as an institution, happen to choose the profession of a priest. Of a priest. It is, this pedophilia, a phenomenon which, I claim, concerns the Catholic Church as such. It is inscribed into its very functioning as a social symbolic institution. It does not concern the private unconscious of individuals. It concerns the unconscious of the institution itself. It is not, I'm not talking now in a Jungian way about any collective unconscious, but the set of unwritten obscene rules which supplement the explicit rules of an institution. Along these lines, to make it clear, one can imagine a straight, not pedophiliac priest who, after years of service, gets involved in pedophilia because the very logic of the institution seduces him into it. According to some investigations by my friends in Slovenia, this effectively was the case. They claimed that they looked into the past of some priests, and again, it's not, unfortunately, they were privately pedophiliac. They were nice heterosexual guys, nothing to do with children, sex, that any Catholic preacher would love them, and it's the institution, literally, which redirected their interests. Such an institutional unconscious designates the obscene disavowed underside which, precisely as disavowed, sustains the public institution. In the army, this underside consists of the obscene sexualized rituals of fragging and so on, which sustain the group solidarity. What this means is that identifying oneself with this secret side is a key constituent of the very identity of a Christian priest. If a priest seriously, not just rhetorically, denounces these scandals. He thereby excludes himself from the ex ecclesiastic community. He is no longer one of us. In exactly the same way as, for example, a citizen of a small town in the south of the United States in the late 20s, if he denounced Ku Klux Klan to the police, excluded himself from his community, betraying its fundamental solidarity. So, back to Foxman. When Foxman offered to treat Gibson's outburst as a case of individual pathology, which needs a therapeutic approach, he not only committed the same error as those who want to reduce cases of pedophilia to individual pathologies. Much worse, he contributed to the revival of the Serbsky Institute way of dealing with problematic political ideological attitudes as phenomena which call for psychiatric intervention. In the same way that the overriding belief of the Serbsky Institute was that a person has to be insane to be against communism, Foxman's offer implies that a person has to be insane to be anti-Semitic. Now, I'm not saying against this that it's healthy to be anti-Semitic. <laughs> what I'm saying is that this way to dealing with the problem enables us to avoid the key issue, which is that precisely anti-Semitism in our Western societies was and is not an ideology displayed by insane people, but an ingredient of our of spontaneous ideological attitudes of perfectly sane people, of our ideological sanity itself. This then is where we stand today, a sad choice between Gibson and Foxman, between the obscene bigotry of fundamentalist beliefs and the no less obscene disqualification of problematic beliefs as cases of insanity that need therapy. Now let me go even darker in the newly emerging ideological obscenity. The ultimate irony is that, now I pass to a more theoretical general claim, what is threatened by such disqualifications, where if you have unacceptable ideological political views, you are con considered as the one who needs therapy, I claim is nothing less than what is threatened is nothing less than the notion of another human being as neighbor. Neighbor in its full meaning in Jewish and also Christian legacy. The other who is to be treated psychiatrically for his opinions is deprived of the dignity of a neighbor. 
Now, traces of this denigration of the neighbor are also found elsewhere. Say, recently I read with horror, I must admit, Sam Harris bestseller, End of Belief. It's a book arguing in a vulgar materialistic way about how beliefs today sustain terror that we need uh, to, uh, to break finally with religion. But it's a little bit terrifying to read in this book Harris approach to torture, which is based on the distinction between our immediate being impressed by the suffering of others and our abstract notion of others' suffering. According to Harris, and of course this is true, it is much more difficult for us to torture a singular person in front of us than to drop a bomb from a far distance that would cause the even more, much more painful death of tens of thousands. We are thus all caught, according to Harris, in a kind of ethical illusion, parallel to perceptual illusions. The ultimate cause of these illusions is that, although our power of abstract reasoning has developed immensely, our emotional ethical responses remain conditioned by hundreds of thousands of years, years old instinctual reactions of sympathy to suffering and pain that is directly witnessed. So, to put it bluntly, his idea is the following one. In the same way that our visual illusion, immediately, our visual perception tells us sun is only a small yellow object there, but through science, astronomy, and so on, we know that sun is much bigger than Earth, that cognitively we progress. We know how to suspend, correct our spontaneous perceptions. But that unfortunately, at the moral level, we in the moral sphere, we remain at the level of the primitives who think sun is really a small ball circulating up there in the sky. Sun standing here, of course, for the suffering of thousands which we don't immediately experience in front of us. This is why shooting someone point blank is, for most of us, much more repulsive than pressing a button that will kill tens of thousand absent persons. A quote from Harris. Given what many of us believe about the exigencies of our war on terrorism, the practice of torture in certain circumstances would seem to be not only permissible but necessary. Still, it does not seem any more acceptable in ethical terms than it did before. The reasons for this are, I trust, every bit as neurological as those that gives rise to the moon illusion. It may be time to take out our rulers and hold them up to the sky. So, you are now informed. If you feel excessive sympathy when somebody is tortured in front of you, it's a neurological mistake at the same level when you think that the uh, moon is a small object. No wonder that Harris refers to Alan Dershowitz and his legitimization of torture. Now, in order to suspend this evolutionary condition vulnerability to the physical display of others' suffering, Harris imagines an ideal truth pill, an effective torture equivalent to the decaf coffee, wind-free beans, diet coke, whatever you want. Quote, for me, the most terrifying quote from Harris' book. He imagines, quote, a drug that would deliver both the instruments of torture and the instruments of its utter concealment. In other ways, in other words, decaf coke torture. The action of the pill would be to produce transitory paralysis and transitory misery of a kind that no human being would willingly submit to a second time. Imagine how we torturers would feel if, after giving this pill to captive terrorists, each of the terrorists lay down for what appeared to be an hour's nap, only to arise and immediately confess everything he knows about the workings of his organization. Might we not be tempted to call it a truth pill in the end? End of quote. Now, as I already said, the very first lines indicate the typically postmodern logic of chocolate laxity. The torture imagined here is like a decaf coffee. You get the result without having to suffer the unpleasant side effects of sympathy and so on. 